Hey guys, welcome to Fearless Cooking. I look forward to doing this with you today. We're doing the big ass salad with a, it, basically it's a knockoff of a Trader Joe's uh, dressing that is turmeric and ginger, and, and we'll, we'll get into all the ingredients that are going into it. As you can see, I'm a little more spread out here than normal. Um, I, you know, one of the things I've been, so I've gotten some, some helpful feedback that said, hey, you go too fast. It's too hard to keep up. You know, instead of it being something that's kind of relaxing and enjoyable, it's this frenetic kind of, oh, what did we forget? How hell, he's already gone three steps forward. And I, I, I realized that's probably real accurate. So I'm going to be real intentional about trying to slow down and repeat things as I go through them. Uh, and then, and that was one of the reasons I decided, hey, let's do the prep together. So real quick, before I get too far into it, if you have questions, you can uh, use the the Q&A deal or the chat, and Jude will get those questions and relay them to me. So that, that's kind of how we are gonna handle that piece. So I'm gonna still, and before we get started, I saw this quote today that it just really struck me as perfect. It says, people are fed by the food industry, which pays no attention to health, and they are treated by the health industry, which pays no attention to food. And that's by a guy named Wendell Berry, who's a writer and an environmentalist and also a farmer. So anyway, you'll hear me talk more and more over time about some changes that are happening in the agricultural community that I'm real excited about. And, and I am going to be kind of relentless, relentless in my advocacy around doing more to support the small ranchers and farmers. Because one of the things that, as I kind of get dove into the whole health side of stuff, one of the things that I realized was that my diet as it existed back a bunch of years ago was unsustainable. Okay, that I couldn't keep eating the way that I was eating and expect to survive. And so that kind of started me on this trail that is, you know, results in me doing fearless cooking and, and, and being a problem health coach. But, but one of the other things that I've started to realize is that just the whole kind of agriculture system as it exists today is unsustainable, right? We've gone from people using like manure for their fertilizer to this real agribusiness that relies on chemicals. And, and, and one of the things that's doing is that it's forcing a lot of the small farmers out of business, but it's also destroying the soil. And in the process, it's destroying the nutrient value of the foods that are grown in that soil. So, so you're gonna hear me talk more and more about something called regenerative agriculture, which is a way that, that farmers and ranchers are starting to restore the health of their soil. And it's also making it to where farming and ranching is becoming a viable business again for smaller farms and ranchers. So anyway, I won't like take the whole session talking about that today, but just kind of stay tuned because I'll definitely be talking more about it. Um, so the, the ingredients that we're gonna use for the salad dressing, we're gonna use a cup of water, and I'm just gonna pour that straight into here. We're gonna use uh, a half a cup of squeezed lemon juice, and I will like measure that out and then just pour it straight in here. Uh, we're gonna use a, a half a cup of almond butter. And, I'm sorry, you're right, a third cup of almond butter. And, and I'm just gonna like measure that into the cup and then dump it in here. I decided instead of putting it in here and having kind of a little bit stick there, We'll just dump it all in the blender. You mean in the little serving dish. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure. I'm not ramekining the okay. some of these ingredients just because I think they'll end up, you know, you, you lose little tiny bits of it kind of at each step along the way. But I did notice you have all the ingredients out of it. Yeah. So one of the things that you know you guys have heard me talk about mise en place, which is kind of getting all of the ingredients together. And if I'm gonna a lot of stuff I'll have it all prepped before I start to cook. With this, since the salad is for the most part just kind of an assembly, it's like, all right, we, we will be prepping the ingredients before they go in there. And then first thing we're going to do is get the salad dressing done. Okay. And once again, I'll kind of step us through that. Um, 
but let, let me go back to this. So we got a cup of water, a, a, a half a cup of squeezed lemon juice, a third of a cup of almond butter, two tablespoons of uh, grated or minced ginger, and, and I'm just gonna like s slice it super fine and then mince it. Um, we're gonna use a tablespoon of white miso paste. And I have, when I was like experimenting with this, I took the, the package of miso and put it in the, t in the glass Tupperware and then I'll ke I keep it in the refrigerator. And we'll talk more about miso in a minute. Uh, a tablespoon of um, molasses and then zest from one lemon. Oops, I forgot the turmeric. Yeah, two, clo two cloves of garlic. Okay, the turmeric. We got two teaspoons of turmeric. Now, if you look at this turmeric, this, I don't know if you can see it well or not, but this turmeric is kind of a, it's more of a golden brown than a yellow. And what it is, this is Aleppi turmeric. And Aleppi is just, it's a region in India. So the uh, probably the majority of, of turmeric that you see in most grocery stores is it, it, it just says turmeric on it but what it is is it's if they call it madras turmeric okay the the aleppi the thing that first of all just when i saw it i was like and that looks richer i bet that's a, a better taste the other thing i found out about it is that it has about twice the curcumin concentration in it so i think the madras stuff's about three and a half percent this stuff's at six and a half percent. And the reason that that's important is that they're finding all kinds of kind of health benefits associated with, uh, with turmeric or turmeric or turmeric, however you want to pronounce it. So, so I want to make sure that, you know, that you kind of know the difference in it and realize that this is something that I think you're going to see more and more being talked about in uh, like, it's it's it used to be all only on kind of the alternative health side. Now all of a sudden it's showing up all over the place. So it has kind of gained some traction from a mainstream standpoint. So anyway, what we're going to do to get started is I'll go ahead and get the 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 liquid ingredients in here first, and then we'll add the other stuff into the blender. All right. So I'm going to put a cup of water in. So here's my. You right. could use any kind of blender for this. Yeah, the you know, kind of the 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 beefier the better. Okay. But yeah, it's because and you know that's also the reason that I don't throw a whole chunk of ginger in. It's because it's like, hey, help the blender out just a little bit. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna do so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grate um, the the lemon before I, I uh, juice it. Oh, this is for the lemon zest? For, for the lemon zest. You're getting that yeah. ready now. Yeah, because okay. I'm gonna get the lemon juice, but instead of trying to zest a half a lemon. Maybe you could also let folks know what utensils they should have ready. Okay, well. so knife, um, measuring spoons, um, pair, pair, paring knife if you're having to core your strawberries, uh, and then a honing steel, and a, a chef's knife. And then I'm using a, uh, uh, this is like a microplane to, to be able to zest the lemon. Okay, could you just use a grater for that as well? You can, yeah. It's just what you want to do is you want to make sure that you stop with the kind of the yellow and that you don't get down into that white pith okay. that's underneath it because that's a little more bitter. And I also noticed you have a, a lemon squeezer. Uh, yeah, juicer. because we're going to, yeah. we're going to squeeze to okay. it. Uh, we're going to squeeze a half a cup of lemon juice. Okay, okay. so we're, I'm just gonna, what I do with this is I just like start grating the on the microplane and I just kind of look to see, all right, you know, kind of where where am I as far as uh, like get, you know, getting the uh, the zest. And the thing that zest does is it, it you know, it is adding those oils that's in the skin and it just really brings, you know, a real bright citrus note to it. Listen to that bright citrus note. It sounds like I'm talking about wine. Oh, and speaking of wine, I don't have the bottle out here, but this is a uh, Sterling. Eh, you know, it's just kind of cheap wine, but I, it's it works. Chardonnay for tonight. Uh huh. 
Thank you. All right. Now, and then I just, what I do is just tap it every once in a while just so that it kind of knocks this stuff off the bottom. So just, you know, try, trying to make sure that I don't get a whole bunch of that stuff underneath the, 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 the peel because it's called the pith and it's got kind of a bitter taste to it. All right, we're getting closer. But how much does it make when you're done? It looks like I'll, maybe yeah, I'll show you. Okay. It's not a ton. But you don't need probably a whole lot. No, no, because it's, yeah, a little powder. of this goes a long way. But you know, the other thing I would say with lemon zest is this is another one of those things to experiment with because it just adds this brightness to, to a dish. So like with vegetables, you know, you can like put this stuff on top uh, and just like start playing around with it to see how you like it. Smells really heavenly. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's great smell and stuff. Okay, so here's what that looks like. So, you know, it's not a, it's, it's probably a teaspoon, maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm just, just gonna put it yeah, I just I put it on wax paper okay. just to make it a little bit easier, and then I'll just use this uh, this paring knife to kind of get it so we can see it. Maybe you yeah, know, that's probably more like a couple of teaspoons. Are you gonna put it aside for now? No, I'm just gonna go ahead and put, put it, it in there because there's no point in leaving it somewhere where it can get you know knocked over like I almost did then. Okay, so that's in there. All right. That away. All right, so now we've got we've got a we've got water and we've got our lemon zest in the blender. Okay. All right, and let me grab my. You know, I I use I'll use a recipe if I'm making a dressing that I that I haven't been making over and over and over again, just so I make sure I kind of get my ratios right. Mm -hmm. With stuff like salads, it's like you know this to me is that perfect kind of canvas for how do you get stuff out of your refrigerator, you know, to make sure that you don't let it go bad. Mm. And then you can kind of play with, okay, what are flavor profiles that you like? Okay, so we got the water, we're gonna do the lemon juice now. So that is a half a cup. Now, the last time I did it, I saw that that was about two and a half lemons. Let's see, you know, and obviously, you know, lemons are different sizes. So let's see how we, how this one stacks up. Slicing the lemon in half, it looks like. Yeah, but I did. So I had already honed this thing before we we started filming. But I'm gonna just kind of to be consistent. This is something that so few people do, and it's so important. And that is just quickly honing the blades. And what you're doing is that you're pushing it down and drawing it across. You're just you're you're pushing it down and drawing it across. So down and across and down and across. And my recommendation, I used to pull it back this way. It's like I kept going, okay, sooner or later, you're gonna miss that and cut the part of your thumb off. So I decided that, you know, we have opposable fun thumbs for a reason. So I'd like to keep mine kind of un unharmed. Um, okay, so I've now I've honed the steel. All right, now I'm gonna put the lemon in the uh, squeezer and just give it a give it a squeeze. And that's eh, you know, still got a ways to go. Let's see if you can get any more out of it. Turning it over to Yeah, the I other didn't side cut the ends off of out. it because on that one. Normally I squeeze them like both sides because I do not figured out that you actually get a little more lemon juice out that way. Get rid of the seeds here. Pull this thing, pull down the cutter, cutting board back just a little bit, make it a little more accessible. All right, so I'm gonna do what else? Cut the end of this one off. So you're cutting off the end. Yeah, I cut the end thing. off just because what I do is then I flip the lemon over and squeeze it the other way, and, and usually you get this little, like a little bit extra out of it. Let's see if it works this time. Yeah, not much, but a little bit. All right, so that's one lemon. Now then, we'll do the ones that haven't been uh, peeled or haven't been uh, zested. 
just like I said, just cutting the very ends of it off. When you do that, you have to be kind of careful when you flip it over so that you don't take any seeds that are in there and uh, you know drop those in your in your liquid. All right, so this is half. Now we're at one and a half, and we still have a ways to go. This one may only be a two lemon deal. Let's see. Depends on the size of the lemons, obviously. Yeah, obviously. And then some, you know, the other thing I've noticed over the years is just some lemons are super juicy and some aren't. Yeah. So yeah, it's we're still a little short. So yeah, it's probably gonna be two and a half. Let's see. Okay. So cutting off the ends again. Yeah, cutting the end off and then cutting this one in half. Right. And you know, this right here is the reason that I like having a large cutting board because I've got things kind of scattered out, but at least I have room to move, you know, to operate. So that that's a, that for me is appealing. I know this is a big cutting board, but it is super functional. Yeah. Right at? We're right at it. Yeah, right at a so half, half a cup. A cup. So right. half a cup of lemon juice. We'll put that in the blender. Whoa, shoot. Mm. Oh, that's a, kind of a. Still that. Yeah, that was like, juice. ah, you know, the steady hands normally. that was about maybe I haven't had enough of my my wine yet I need a shot of whiskey or something all right here we go got that cleaned up all right now a third of a cup of almond butter okay. and this is uh, Kirkland's organic creamy almond butter but you know I like um, I uh, obviously anybody that's watched this at all knows I'm a big uh, Costco fan uh, let's see, my third of a cup is here. Yep. So you're measuring it. Could you use peanut butter instead? You or? could, you could. I just, I'm not a, you know, peanuts are another one of those crops that is, you know, a lot of GMO. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, if you're going to do it, I would say definitely use organic. All right. That's a third of a cup. Could you use any sort of nut butter, do you think? Yeah, cashew would be good. Um, change the flavor, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. You know, you could even use, what's the, um, what is it? Uh, oh, what's the, what's the one that is uh, sesame seeds? Um, There's also sunflower butter, mm -hmm. sunflower seed butter. Yeah, yeah. You know, I... I just always have almond butter here and it's one of those things that I also will use like almond butter in soups to kind of add like some creaminess to it and some texture so yeah mm. My, no sense of wasting any of that mm -mm. almond butter no not at all so. except you know when you have a mustache it's kind of important to, there we go. I'm just okay. gonna put this back in the fridge, get it out of the way. All right, now we've got um, the, ginger. the ginger. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna break this piece off. So it's about, it's about two inches. So okay. I'm gonna break it off. Show people about what size. Yeah, Show so people. about this size, so about, you know, like a, you know, about a thumb size. Okay. And then I'm going to use the the edge of a spoon to get the uh, to get the skin off. So you just that way you're not worrying about cutting part of a finger off with a paring knife. And it's just I forgot who it was. You know, one of the chefs on TV I think I saw do this, and it's like, huh, okay, that makes sense. I've done it ever since then. So I'm just scraping it and 
have, I'll kind of let everybody catch up. Yeah, I'll give them a little bit of time to do that. Mm-hmm. Because once we get it scraped, then we're gonna just cut, we're just gonna chop it pretty thin, pretty thin. I know you can buy minced ginger already in a jar. Would that work as well? It might, you know, so many of those things, it's like when you taste them, they have kind of a preserved taste to them. Mm. So I just, you know, ginger is cheap. So I just try to always have some available. How do you store it? You want to talk about the best way to store ginger? Yeah, so I'm, I may not be the expert on this. I just store it in the, like in the pantry, okay? I keep it where the air can get around it. I've seen people talk about, you know, that, hey, it makes sense to freeze it. And I, you know, I haven't tried that. Um, but I, you know, my goal is either to go, it, it's, it's also kind of in that um, cilantro kind of category with me. And that is, I always want to have it available. So before I head to the store, I look, okay, what's the status of my ginger? You know, if it starts getting kind of gnarly looking, because I have some other, I went ahead and picked this up. So this piece, including that knob that I just took off, was like 88 cents at, at uh, Central Market. So like I said, it's not expensive. Um, and it's just, it, you know, it, one of the things that I'm beginning to see, like turmeric and ginger are both, um, they're called rhizomes. It's a, it's a kind of a root. Uh, there, and there's another one that's kind of in a similar category called Gorongal. All these are like from the kind of the India and that part of the world. And we're beginning to, Western medicine is beginning to see, hey, these things have an incredible anti-inflammatory property. So they work real well together. They're complementary of each other. And I know the recipe doesn't call for pepper, but I'm going to put a few cranks of pepper in here because one of the things that they found out is to make the curcumin more bioavailable that's in the turmeric. If you add pepper with it, that increases the bioavailability. So we're gonna put a little bit of that in there. It also smells heavenly. That oh, it does. Smells so yep. wonderful. So, so what I'm gonna do now, let me move this out of so you can see, is I'm just gonna take, and this is one you definitely wanna use, that claw grip. I'm just gonna take the knife, and I'm going to use kind of that claw grip and get it to where, okay, the blade's only going to go down a real thin slice. So I want this, as, I want to, and then that, now that I've got a piece cut off, I've got a flat spot that I can set the, the, the uh, uh, ginger down so it won't rock around on me, okay? And I'm just going to try and see how thin I can cut it. So I'm just slicing all the way through, and I'm letting the knife do the work. So you're just running the knife forward. Okay. Well, you could also grate this. Is you can. Right? What happens with me, every time I grate it, and I'm going to flop it now over on that oh, flat side, side. Yeah. yeah, is that I end up with this kind of a lot of fibrous stuff. And so what, I, what I've what i decided over the years is just, you know, chop it, mince it as fine as I can, and then I'm going to let the blender do the rest of the work. Okay, so once again, just kind of running it down, letting the, you know, let, letting the knife do the work. Okay, now then, I'm just gonna take it and line them. So I'm, I'm taking it, I turn the, um, the ginger 90 degrees, okay? I'm just gonna kind of hold it down, same thing. I'm gonna just, you know, put my knuckles out there so that's the guide that my that the knife's following along, okay? And just once again start making it real fine. So the cross cutting. Yeah, I'm cross cutting. That's exactly what I'm doing. Thanks. And just you know, kind of keep making progress through it. Don't don't take big chunks. And you know, if you do, it's not a big deal because we're gonna what we're gonna do now once we get it. Okay, so I've got all of the that one done. I mean, I've like gone through the cross the cross cut. Is now I'm just gonna take it and then just kind of once again kind of put my you know use my knuckles as a guide. We're just gonna go through this 
Right, one more time. Chop one more yeah, time. and now then I'm just going to take the knife and just I'm going to like kind of hold the tip down and then just rock it back and forth across it. So like kind of a fan, like I'm just basically doing a fan motion. Okay, I'm going to scrape it all together with the knife edge and do it again. And like I said, you've got you know we've got the 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 blender, but you know, blenders have kind of a variety of, uh, you know, I mean, you've got ones out there that are like, the, you know, Vitamix, but then you've got some, you know, that are not nearly as uh, uh, powerful. And so it's like, all right, let's kind of make it a little bit easier. I see a couple of big pieces, so I'm just, all right, so now then. Does it seem like it's still about two tablespoons? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, probably is. All right, so now I'm gonna use the bench scraper that I've got to kind of pull all this together. Why do you use that instead of the knife? Well, first of all, because it's bigger. And it was also, it's one of those things that early on I saw, I think it was Kenji Lopez Hall says, hey, buy a bench scraper, it will save your knives. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I was like, ah, hell, I don't need to do that. But then I realized, um, you know, it's it's a lot more um, practical, really. It it just it works so much better than than trying to get it to stay on the knife. So I put it I put it on the bench scraper and I'm dropping it off in the blender. It being the ginger. it being the ginger. So we we put about a two inch knob of ginger about about, about the the size of my thumb. Okay, we put that in the. Uh, uh, we, we peeled it with the edge of the spoon and then just like basically cut planks off of the ginger as thin as we could and then turned it 90 degrees and cross cut it okay all the way through and then just fine you know fine chopped it with the knife and then you know held the knife tip down and just rocked it like a fan across the ginger and did that a couple of times all right cheers that requires a sip of wine. It does. That one. Now, okay. All right. So now then, let's see what we got on our list here. All right. So now we're going to do the miso paste. And a long time ago, I had this soup that was just miso soup. And every time I had it, it just wrecked my gut for days. So I just said, man, I just can't do miso. I hate miso. Well, probably what it was is that there was some other garbage in that soup. Because, man, I... This recipe, there was somebody, I'm trying to remember who the woman was. I put her name on here somewhere, or if I didn't, I'll, uh, let me see. No, I, I need to, I need to um, give, give her an acknowledgement. So I will, uh, I'll find her name and, and put it on the Fearless Cooking site. Because she, she did her version. My own, I've changed hers just a little bit. But she like recommended white miso paste. So I bought white miso paste at Central Market probably two months ago, and it comes in a uh, like uh, how would I say it's like a, it's in a plastic pouch, and once you open it, they say they refrigerate it. So this was kind of what's left um, from from that, and. You Matt, add something to it, or that's just the paste? That's what that it looks like. So what it, yeah. So not it's white, though. No, it's really not. But it's like the more they cook, the, the more they roast the um, uh, soybeans. It's a what this is 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 it's fermented soybeans. Okay. That's okay. What miso is. Yeah, and they add like this aspergillus mold to the soybeans to, you know, to give it its particular flavor, and you know it's. I, 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 I like it a lot. Um, let's see how much, okay, a tablespoon. And what I've started playing with is like, you can take this and add butter with it and saute vegetables in it. Or you can add it into um, like sauces. So it's, 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 a, it's a great kind of flavor enhancer. All right, so that's, that's like a, a heaping tablespoon. So we're putting a tablespoon of miso paste in. All right, that's good. All right, now we've got the zest from the lemon, that's already in, two cloves of garlic. You forgot the molasses. 
Yep, I'll put that in a second. Are you yep. coming back to yep. me? Okay. All right. So tell us what you're doing with the, the garlic. Right? Yeah, so what I do with the garlic, thanks. I, I, I just smash it, okay, with the flat of the knife because that makes it a lot easier to get the skins off. Okay. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is kind of the same thing I did with the ginger, right? I'm going to use the claw and I'm just going to mince it. I'm just going to cut planks on that like real fine. Okay. Just all the way through. And then, you know, I had this piece kind of at the end, I laid it on its, on the flat and then just finished it. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. And then once I get both of these cloves, slice then I'll mince it. All right. So you smashed it on top of the knife to get the skin off yep. and then Th okay. Then I just laid it down and then just, just sliced it with the knife and now okay. I'm going to chop it. Okay. I'll mince it. Okay and I'm just banding it out again. Banding it out once again just kind of going across and then back across and you know you can I've, I've watched people that make a paste with it they use um, put a little salt on there and then use the flat of the knife to kind of really pulverize it. Um, don't really, I don't think I really need to do that with this. So once again, put it on the bench scraper. Just put it over here and put it in the, the blender. Okay, so now we got that. And now we're going to add a tablespoon of molasses. And this is blackstrap molasses, which is like, so all of this stuff comes from uh, sugar cane. And this blackstrap is like the very kind of last ingredient left when they, when, because they make sugar in the beginning and they just keep cooking this stuff down. And this blackstrap molasses is the last stuff that's left. So it has a real kind of minerally component to it. But I just wanted something that kind of added a smoky flavor to this. Um, and I just was curious to see what the flavor was, and, and it was something I liked, so I was like, well, I guess I'll do this. All right, so I've got the molasses in there. So, so here's what we've got in there so far. We've got water, we've got um, the, the juice from two and a half lemons, we've got a third of a cup of almond butter, we've got basically two um, uh, tablespoons of grated ginger. We've got a tablespoon of white miso paste. We've got a tablespoon of molasses. We're going to put the uh, turmeric in, and that's two teaspoons of turmeric. So you had already measured that ahead of time? Yeah, I'd already measured that ahead of time. Zest from one lemon and two cloves of garlic minced, okay? And I think that's everything. I'm going to add a, like four cranks of pepper to it, or maybe six. All right, and then let's uh, let's crank this baby up. So, what speed are you gonna put it on? And oh, I'm gonna put it on high because okay. I want it. I want it to get you know as as dissolved as possible. <laughs> So it should be like a regular salad dish yep. consistency, so yep. runny, obviously. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that, that I like about making my own is I know what's in there. I know the kind of oil that's in it, okay? And that, for, for, for me, is huge because a lot of what gets put in salad dressing does not belong in people's bodies. All right, I'm gonna get this out of the way. How does it taste? I don't know, I'm getting ready to find out. And you know, it is, oh yeah, I like that, that's good. Um, it's got, you know, there's there's some heat associated with turmeric. It's not, it's not really hot, but it, I guess it's spicy is the way to describe it, as opposed to, and, and spicy from, uh, it also has the ginger, and ginger has a bite to it. Sure. 
So, but I think it's great. That's the other reason that I added the uh, 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 molasses is to kind of counter some of that edge and also some of the acidity of the lemon. So, I, like I said, it's, it's something I've become a fan of. I'm gonna sit this over to the side for a second while I make the rest of the salad. Okay, so I've got, uh, let's, we will start with the, um, the bell pepper. So the, all, what are all the ingredients you want yeah, to put in the salad? So, so what I'm going to put in the salad, and once again, this is, you know, the salad is kind of your, your masterpiece, right? I'm going to put two radishes in it. I'm going to put a half of a bell pepper. I'm going to put some uh, uh, snow peas. I'm going to put some strawberries. Uh, I might put some avocado. This thing looks a little dicey. I've got a half one over here that I'll see what kind of what it looks like. Because um, I bought avocados today, but they're too, they're too green. This was one that was in the fridge, but I think it may, you know, have uh, succumbed to the dark side. Uh, I'm going to put a half of a cucumber in. I'm going to put some feta cheese. I'm going to put some sliced almonds. And then I'm going to put some... Um, uh, uh, rotisserie chicken and one of the things to pay attention to is kind of what they put on your rotisserie chicken I found that Central Market and Whole Foods both you know kind of do the same sort of thing I would do it's basically this like salt pepper maybe some garlic and some olive oil so I don't like when I see an ingredient list you know that's got 14 or 22 ingredients and some of them are modified this or such and such that I don't recognize. It's like, ah, eh, I'll pass on that. So anyway, that, uh, we're just gonna pull some pieces off of this. Okay. So, all right, we'll start with the bell pepper and I'm just gonna cut this thing in half. And then I'm just gonna, I don't like meticulously tear the inside. I usually just tear the top out. Okay, and then I'll just like with my fingers pull this kind of white, fluffy stuff off that's part of the rib on the inside. And then I, I like more like kind of chunks of uh, bell pepper in mine. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it, just slice it, okay? And then I will cut each one of these into about thirds. That way you get you know plenty of bell pepper taste. And you I- Show us how-, how, how Yeah, uh, so about like that thick. So about uh, half an inch thick, okay? okay? And you know, once again, this is like the way that I like it. If you like yours diced really fine, then absolutely do that. I had said use a red bell pepper. Well, when I was at uh, Central Market buying bell peppers, the red bell pepper didn't look that great. So it's like, all right, it's either an orange one or a yellow one, and I just picked the orange. But you know, once again, it's just all right, buy the ingredients that look the best. So, you know, I, I said a third, it was more like about a six, but you know, you end up with a, that's about two thirds of an inch. All right, so I'm just gonna take these. I've got, I've got spinach here in the bowl already. Spinach is another one of those things. I always, literally always wanna have it in my refrigerator because it's great to make a salad. The other thing I love about it is if you're going, okay, what vegetable do we have? Hey, guess what? If you have spinach and you have some olive oil, you have a you have a, a side dish that's ready to go in literally like two three minutes max. Just yeah. to saute the spinach. That's it. All you have to do is saute the spinach and you're done. All right. So I'm just pour you know just dropping these in here, and this is these being the bell pepper pieces. And now I will. I'm gonna set that aside. And now I'm going to do the radishes. Now with the radish, um, I heard Gordon Ramsay say topping and tailing, which I thought, ah, that's actually pretty accurate. So I just cut the ends off. Now I can set it flat, okay? So I don't have to worry about it rolling on me. And once again, I'm just using that knuckle as the guide, all right? And just cutting thin radish pieces. And with this, if I can keep it, you know, if it starts getting too squirrely on me, I'll stop. But yeah, I managed to cut these all fairly thin. I'm just gonna take these and just kind of spread them around in there. I'm gonna do the second one. And you know, somebody might go, man, I hate radishes. Well then I would suggest you don't put those in your salad. Um, 
The other thing, I didn't do it with these because these aren't organic radishes, but I've started realizing that the tops to radishes and especially beets is something you don't want to be throwing away. You can actually make a pesto from the radish tops. And we'll do that later. Once I, Central Market gets to where they're carrying organic ones again, I will give that a whirl. All right, so I've just got the radish, I've set it on that flat spot, and now I'm just gonna, like, like I said, use that, that knuckle as a guide and cut through this thing, okay? And I'm just, you have to start, you have to get kind of, in fact, on this one piece, it's kind of squirrely, so I'm just gonna cut that piece in thirds. All right, so here we go. Putting that in the bowl. Now then, um, the cucumber, and I said it use a half of it, so I'm just gonna cut the, the end of it off. I've got it laying down here. And once again, I'm using that knuckle as a guide. So you decided not to peel your cucumber? Yeah, I mean, and this, this one isn't organic, but I'm like, okay, it, you know, they, they have, I always look at that uh, dirty dozen. This one's not showing up on the dirty dozen. So it's like, I don't get quite as obsessed about making sure it's organic. And let's see, here we go. That's about half. So that's a half a cucumber. So what, what I've got in my salad is right now is spinach, bell pepper, um, radish, and cucumber. And, you know, I, this is probably more snap or uh, uh, snow peas. So when I, I'm just going to look, because I like things kind of, I don't want to overwhelm it with one particular item. So I'll show you how much I put in there. That, that's the amount of uh, uh, snow peas I put in. And you know, once again, snow peas may be your favorite thing and you wanna put them all in there. I'll probably, I've got these and a few left. I will probably stir fry those with something. Um, all right, now then, I'm gonna uh, core the strawberries. So these are like little bitty strawberries, but they were so sweet the other day that I decided, shoot, let's, let's use these. Um, this one's, just getting the core out. Yeah, I'm just taking the tops off of them. And then I'll just slice them in my hand in the, uh, go straight into the salad with them. So, yeah. I also like the different colors you have. It makes it more appealing too when you have all different. It, it, yeah, it does. And it's also, you know, it's one of those things that I heard a long time ago, it's like eat the rainbow. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, the thing that are, is in various fruits and vegetables that give them their colors also, you know, act as like antioxidants. So it's, it's like, you know, I just, plus to me, life is too short to eat tan food, right? I just, you know, people that are, you know, it's like, oh, I just like meat and potatoes. It's like, oh man, what, what a boring life. If that's what turns you on, cool. It's just, it's not what turns me on. And, um, you know, I just, I don't, I don't think it serves us well from a nutritional standpoint. And it also, it, it goes back to when you start looking at kind of how we evolved. Yeah, I, I get it. It's 445. <laughs> um, that, that, you know, we ate this incredibly varied diet. And so I think it's important that we maintain that so that we, we kind of add different, uh, like, nutrient sources to our diet. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this over here and I'm just going to slice the strawberry straight into it. And, you know, this is not one of those times where I'm going to let the knife do the work and go through my thumb. So you just kind of, you know, stop pushing when it gets to your thumb. And I, you know, these are little strawberries, so it's not, you know, there was probably six of those. Um, but, and you know, some people don't like fruit on their salad. I, Lindsay, my daughter made a salad when she was in college as part of this class that she was taking. And I got a chance to eat that salad and I have been a, uh, 
strawberries on my salad person ever since then. So strawberries and spinach just work really well together if you haven't tried it. All right, so we're I'm done now with the strawberries. So they're in there. Now, I am going to put uh, some, I, I buy these sliver or either sliced almonds. So I'm just gonna put a sprinkle of these in there. That looks good. And then a little more crunch and just mm -hmm. so that, that nutty flavor together. Yeah, and it also play, you know, with the almond butter that's mm -hmm. that's in the dressing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the chicken in, and you know, once again, this is kind of up to you as to how much to put in. I'm just going to reach in here and just grab a piece of recipe, and I am not a huge um, white meat fan from chicken, but it's like, hey, it works with this. And I'm just you can put the skin in. I huh? even put the skin in because to me the skin is the best part. Adds a little fat. Adds a little salad. fat, adds a little, you know, it also it's like especially with rotisserie, that's where you know it's like it's salt and pepper. Um, and I'm not putting a ton in here because you know, if we don't eat it all today, then I don't have you know chicken hanging out in there for you know a couple of days so you could also just have the salad ready and then just put the chicken absolutely right yeah yeah and i'm just i'm just just kind of shredding it yeah like. just with my hands and you could you, you certainly could uh, chop it but then i'm going to wash my hands and put a little feta on there and we'll be done No, I was just thinking, it's, it sounds weird, but you could even eat this for breakfast, couldn't you? Uh, so, so much of what I do for breakfast is I will have a regular meal, you know, from, from whatever was left over from the day before. But yeah, I mean, this has, you know, some people, the eggs are their only breakfast. Um, you know, God help you if, uh, you know, uh, donut and orange juice is your breakfast. But um yeah, this would we, work great for we breakfast. We do have a question from our yeah. participant. How long will the dressing keep? So I, I've got some in the fridge that's been there a week. I think it's probably good, you know, my guess is probably seven to 10 days. You know, when you think about the ingredients, there's nothing in there, mm -hmm. that there's no egg or things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say, you know, I'd give it a week. Um, okay. And then here's the thing I like about this stuff. You can put it on vegetables. So like if you fix like that spinach that I was talking about, you could then drizzle some of this stuff on top uh, of it. You saute some spinach. Yeah, it, well, this will work. Snow peas too. Yeah, it that? will work with snow peas. It okay. will work with, in fact, it would work on this chicken. Wow. Okay. Hmm. So I'm just going to take just a little bit of the, um, the uh, feta and kind of put that on top. Is it kind of a tangy? And a saltiness, yeah. you know, which I just, I, I had feta sit in the fridge forever. That's the other thing nice about feta is because it's kind of brined, it lasts forever. forever. Okay. Yeah. And one of the things that I've seen people recommend is don't throw the juice away. Use it to like marinate meats and stuff, which I think is a great idea. So I'm going to give that a try and I'll let you know how I like it. All right. So here's what we've got. We've got the chicken, we've got feta cheese, we've got sliced almonds, we have strawberries, we have snow peas, mm. uh, we have bell pepper, I, we, we, we have spinach. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, that's, like I said, that's what appealed to me today. All right, this thing would work with asparagus, it would work with, you know, with shrimp instead of chicken. Part of what I'm trying to do with the chicken is we'll have, several recipes over the next month or so that use rotisserie chicken so that when you buy a rotisserie chicken mm -hmm. and you have one meal that it's like you know you're just you know taking parts of the chicken and having like you know green beans and sweet potatoes with it all right what do you do with the rest yeah this is one idea and i, I i'm going to introduce several more Excellent. okay next week we're going to do a pan, pan roasted fish with cherry tomatoes. Mm. Yeah, and what I'm gonna recommend is like halibut or cod. So something that's fairly thick okay. and, and a white fish. 
So I'll, I'll let you guys figure out what fish you're gonna do, but just real quick, it's got cherry tomatoes, shallots, garlic, olive oil, uh, sherry or red wine, a little honey, salt, pepper, white fish, uh, lemon zest, uh, basil, and mint. So those are gonna be the ingredients. I'll put this stuff in for next week. And uh, hey guys, enjoy the, the meal and uh, cook fearlessly. Look forward to cooking with you guys again. Thanks a lot. Thank you.